Aircraft line operations are important duty, and let's face it, they can be dangerous duty if you don't know the right way to do your job. When you're working on the line, you have dangers all around you. Propellers whirling at tremendous speed. Propeller slipstream with the force of wind blowing 75 to 100 miles an hour. Jet intake, invisible forces that can pick you up like a vacuum cleaner takes up a matchstick. Jet exhaust, invisible blasts of heat that cut a searing swath for 200 feet behind the aircraft. Thousands of gallons of highly volatile gasoline, which a split-second spark can transform into an inferno. Guns which shouldn't be loaded, but may be. Ammunition. Rockets. Practice bombs and other armament. And overall, the deafening, confusing noise. and other hazards threaten you, the other fellow, and the millions of dollars of equipment for which you are responsible. They can lead to this, or this, but they don't have to, and they shouldn't. The Navy spends a lot of time and effort on your safety. It investigates each accident carefully and takes all possible steps to prevent similar mishaps. It issues special safety tech orders for your protection and carries on an intensive safety educational program. And safety is a key factor in all Navy operating instructions. The instructions you receive are the sum total of the Navy's experience as to what causes accidents and how to prevent them. Understanding and following these instructions enables you to control the dangers in your work. If you don't understand your instructions, ask. This film will show you how to work safely, which means efficiently, in aircraft line operations, including pre-flighting, loading ammunition, taxiing, fueling, and maintenance. Pre-flighting an aircraft is simple and safe when done right. Doing it right starts with the important precautions you take before starting the engine. Make sure the cowling is secured. If sections have been left unfastened, they may blow off. Make sure no loose gear is left behind or ahead of the aircraft. A piece of gear blown into the prop of the aircraft behind can be bad news. Shock the wheels securely. Check all the switches. Be particularly careful not to actuate the canopy closing mechanism. Parking brakes must be on. Ignition switches off. And the mixture control handle at idle cutoff. Only then is it safe to pull the prop through either by hand or by starter. The man who turns up the engine must be either a pilot or a designated plane captain. If he's not a pilot, the aircraft must be tied down as well as chocked before starting the engine. If an auxiliary power unit is needed for starting, be sure you are checked out on how to operate it. Two men are required when pre-flighting a single-engine aircraft, one in the cockpit and one standing by the fire bottle on the ground. For pre-flighting a multi-engine aircraft, two men are needed on the ground. One of the two should be able to see both the man in the cockpit and the man at the fire bottle. 
Here, as in other line operations, you must know and use the standard hand signals. They are the only way you can communicate intelligently over the deafening noise of aircraft operating on the line. It is a strict rule that a signal must be clearly understood and that the understanding be acknowledged before anyone acts on the signal. When the engine is started up, some gasoline usually overflows to the ground. There's always the risk that this spilled gas will catch fire. The man with the fire bottle must be ready for a fire and must know how to use the bottle. Anytime you handle a bottle, first check the seal. If it's broken, you cannot be sure that the bottle is charged and ready to use. If a fire occurs, first break the seal. If the bottle has a screw type valve, turn it to let the carbon dioxide in the bottle discharge. You get best results by holding the discharge as close to the fire as possible, moving the horn slowly from side to side. Some bottles have a trigger type valve. After breaking the seal, you simply press the valve. If a fire should get out of control, it's important that you know the fire bill instructions on your station. They tell you the proper ways to report a fire. And always observe one of the prime prevention rules of the line. No smoking within 50 feet of an aircraft. While the engines are being warmed up, stay clear. That especially means don't walk in front of a propeller. There's always a chance the aircraft will jump the chocks and cut you down. Likewise, don't walk behind the aircraft into the slipstream. There's enough force there to blow you back into another propeller. After the engine is turned off, stay away from that prop. Even though the switches are off, the prop on a hot engine may kick through. For safety in turning up jet aircraft, at least two men are needed on the ground. Jets require a different type of power unit from that used for reciprocating engines. Be sure to use the right type of auxiliary power unit. For your protection, there are three very good rules to follow when working around jets. Number one, stay away from the air intake. If you don't, you may get lost. Or you may at least lose various pieces of personal property. Perhaps no great loss to you, but a possible loss to the Navy of a very costly jet engine. Rule number two, when you want to go from here to there, steer a safe path around the exhaust danger area. The hot exhaust blast can burn you to a crisp up to a minimum distance of 100 feet behind the aircraft, and it's dangerous up to 200 feet. And rule number three, after the engine is turned off, don't touch the tailpipe. It may not look hot, but it is. When a helicopter engine is started, a qualified helicopter pilot should man the controls. If one is not available, commanding officers may authorize qualified line personnel to ground test a helicopter, provided it is securely tied down. It's very important that there be no loose gear in the area, since powerful downdrafts extend in all directions. Only an authorized line crewman may give the signal to engage rotors. On some helicopters, the main rotor swings low enough to hit a person of normal height. Stay clear of this area. And if conditions warrant, a man should be stationed where he can warn personnel away from the very dangerous rotors. Rotors have been known to decapitate a man.
Although aircraft weapons may never be armed on the line, local station regulations may permit armament to be loaded. If so, several precautions are in order. Never smoke within 50 feet of an ammunition truck. Never fuel an aircraft when armament is being loaded. And don't let a gas or oil truck stand or cross in front of the guns. Before starting to load ammunition or other armament, check all master aircraft switches and master armament switches. Make sure they are off. While loading, only operational personnel are allowed in the area and only qualified ordnance and ordnance strikers can do the loading. Keep from in front of the guns. Every gun must be assumed loaded until it is inspected and found not loaded. Bombs, which are used for practice, are loaded on the line. Be careful not to drop them. Work alongside, not under the bomb. The bomb pack may not be locked when you think it is. An accidental release of the bomb is always possible. After an aircraft's weapons have been armed, if for any reason the pilot decides to bring the aircraft back to the line, he must first take it to the dearming area. If an aircraft returns to the line and you see that the rockets are still fused or any other indication that the aircraft has not been dearmed, have nothing to do with it. Get it to move out of there as fast as you can. Safe taxiing of aircraft on the line is pretty much a matter of observing a few simple but important rules and of knowing your hand signal. Your proper position as a taxi signalman is directly forward of the left wing tip at a point where you can see the eyes of the pilot. To direct the towing of an aircraft, work from the same position on a line with the wing tip. You must be able to see the man on the towing vehicle and the eyes of the pilot at all times. When necessary, another crew member stations himself on a line with the right wing tip. He should be visible to the taxi signalman at all times and delivers all necessary signals to him. When directing a pilot in taxi operations, keep a sharp eye behind you. You do this not just for the aircraft's safety, but your own. Fueling an aircraft involves a very serious fire hazard and every possible precaution must be taken to prevent a fire. Make sure all switches in the aircraft are off before fueling. Never smoke within 50 feet of a fuel truck. Static electricity is the biggest danger, so ground the truck. and ground the hose. Be careful not to let the tank overflow. Remember, all aviation fuel is a dangerous fire hazard. Sometimes a minor job of inspection or maintenance has to be done on the line. A few simple safety rules apply. First, be sure to ground the aircraft. Your work stand should be clean free of oil slicks you might slip on or objects you might trip over. Those safety posters you see around the station are there to warn you about accidents that have happened to others. It pays you to pay attention to them. Weather is always a maintenance hazard. Cold weather operations on the line require special procedures which are covered in other films. High winds are another danger. Always be prepared to tie down the aircraft on warning of a windstorm. Proper securing of aircraft may prevent millions of dollars worth of damage when a big blow comes. So you see, working safely on an aircraft line is mostly a matter of knowing the right way to do your job and doing it that way. Turning up the engines is simple enough, but there are safety precautions that must be followed especially around jets and helicopters. 
Loading armament needn't be dangerous if everybody follows instructions. Taxiing can be done safely if you know your proper position, use hand signals correctly, and watch where you're going. Safe fueling simply means keeping fire, sparks, and electricity away from the gas vapors. And safety in inspection and maintenance is largely a matter of common sense. In fact, if you apply common sense at all times and follow the specific instructions we've shown here, you'll be a good aircraft line crewman, able to do a good job to protect your fellow crew members and safeguard the flying equipment, which is so vital to the safety of our country.